So Bungie have just dropped a Developer Insights video into the Shadowkeep DLC and the making of the moon. And although there is in reality not much from this insight we don't already know, there are still a few decent spots to talk about. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and I'd like to thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. If you enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out. And if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe. So the Insight video, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out right now. And going back to the moon started as a bit of a passion project. We want to see, can we take this destination and really stand it up alongside all the rest of the destinations we've made in Destiny 2. So how can we bring back the moon with a twist, make every player realize that it's a moon but with something new on it? Shadowkeep, the moon has entirely changed. It's completely remastered. There have been a bunch of different changes, both large and small, for players to kind of experience on their own and find. We have about double the amount of space. There's more than twice as many places you can go. You've been here before, but it's not the same. The main thing that drove us was the idea of what if there was a hive castle right on the surface. But we were trying to go for something that, was, that felt really imposing and really threatening. It's very spiky and red, which just kind of makes it feel more aggressive. This is the Fallen Catch from Destiny 1, and it's actually kind of resting on the surface of the moon, and the Fallen are basically making a new base using pieces of the catch. They're basically just trying to survive. There's a bunch of new lost sectors in the destination. This is one of the spaces in Destiny 1. You couldn't really go inside of it, but in Destiny 2, we kind of let you get deeper into these structures on the moon. It's meant to feel like you don't really know what you're going to find. You're not really sure how to traverse this land. On the art side, it's got a completely rebuilt skybox. Every space has top to bottom new lighting. This is actually the first space that we relit. In D1, so the lighting is a little bit more clean cut. We went with a lot more saturated colors in some spaces, but in D2, we were trying to give this feeling of desaturation and general spookiness. We wanted it to feel a little bit more mysterious. We wanted it to feel a little bit of that what's in the shadows. Well, we're definitely um, respecting a lot of the secrets that started in D1, and we're exposing those and digging into them a lot more. We open up the game with a cinematic, taking us back into the moon with a character that knows the moon better than anybody else. Eris is, in a way, the catalyst. She's the one that woke up the beast. Imagine that we're going to have like a layer of that you know, dust and a little bit more of that rockiness on there, so when she does reach out to it, it'll wake up. Reacts to it when she touches it. Exactly. We actually just caught that moment for the first time with a lighting test. Eris discovered something under the surface of the moon, a hidden darkness. There's so much we don't know about the moon. I think a lot of this release is, is about mystery. One of the things we really liked about the moon in Destiny 1 was that it brought in this element of spacefaring and the height of humanity, right? The height of where we landed as humans before the collapse. So there's a lot of stories that we're telling about the history of humanity here. The people that built the Accelerator, the people that built all these structures on the moon. Like, what happened to them? Where did they go? We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Landing on the moon in real life was a gargantuan achievement for humankind. We're coming up on the anniversary of that accomplishment. We want to pay respect and kind of like homage to that, uh, that moment in human history. Yep, I agree, looks cool. And some of the changes to the map, the way things have been evolved, as well as a uh, new design on popular areas, I think we are in for a treat. Even if it's just a reskin, as I know many people will point out. So what did I spot worth talking about? Well, firstly, what the heck is this thing? It looks like a resurrected Taken enemy, sort of, I don't even know what this is. I believe they did state within the first Shadowkeep trailer that the enemy is that of Nightmares. Well, this is definitely that of Nightmares. 
Next up we have this freeze frame, and look on the right people, that is the Monte Carlo Exotic Auto Rifle. Not much we can tell from this but we can see it does hold up to at least 15 inch clip, that's up from the standard 31 or 32 from Destiny 1. Now I know this is an exotic auto rifle many people want to see return and it's definitely looking to be that way. So next up people check this out. Now I did have to take a double look at this image, now what I believe this is, is that of the bridge encounter from the Crotus End Raid from D1. Now this was an area we had access to in a mission which came along later where we had to avoid certain spots I believe, I think we have to get a piece of Crotus soul, I mean I could be mistaken but I believe that's kind of right, at least to some degree. And that's what indeed I believe this place will return as being, a spot in which we visit as part of a mission with Shadow Keep. Not unless they plan on bringing back Crotters and Raid. Yep, I'm dreaming too. This next image is seriously interesting, although it's hard to see. What is the weapon the hunter is holding here? I mean, even if we zoom in, it's kind of hard to make out, but it definitely looks extremely unique. So I thought it was definitely worth noting. If you have any idea what this could be, let me know down below in that comment section. Next up, people, we see a set of unique weapons. There are a few here we see which share the same kind of theme. So I'm guessing these are one set of new weapons which will be introduced with Shadow Keep. I see an auto rifle, I believe that is, a sniper rifle, a hand cannon, and one epic looking rocket launcher which we see from a first person perspective. Okay, so moving on and check out this sparrow, people. This is 100% a Jordan sparrow. Like, what the heck? It shares very much the exact same design down to the Ada 1 logo up on its side. Epic! Now, also for a split second, I mean, this is literally one frame within this video, we see what looks to be a lion's head on the front of a sparrow, too. How epic is this? Could this be a fighting lion sparrow? Now I've used a fighting lion for literally every day for the past month trying to get the mountain top legit. I mean I've seen enough of this to be honest, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I never want to see another fighting lion in my entire life. But a fighting lion sparrow? That's a different story. And guys, that's it besides the pre-order rewards of an emote, emblem and ghost shell. We don't at the moment know what these will look like or offer, but if anything else pops up guys, I'll have you covered right here on my channel. Now if you spotted anything from this latest video from Bungie which I haven't covered today, let me know what it is down below in that comment section. But on that note, we have come to the end. If you guys enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video, I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.